Welcome to the A320 Aircraft Familiarization Lesson. This lesson will provide basic information regarding aircraft features, route structures, and general aircraft configurations. A detailed discussion of Airbus push-button operation, including the lights-out philosophy, is also provided. The A320 is designed to be operated on short to medium range commercial flights. It was one of the first commercial aircraft to employ technologies such as fly-by-wire flight controls, composite structures, a glass flight deck, and electronic centralized aircraft monitoring, or ECAM. The A320 is capable of Category 3 approach operations, including auto land. Each are equipped with combined flight management and auto flight systems, making these aircraft capable of RNAV operations. The A320 requires a minimum crew of two pilots and, depending on the seating configuration, up to five flight attendants. Two extra crew member seats are located in the flight deck. The basic dimensions of the A320 are as follows. This diagram depicts the various turning radii for ground maneuvering. The minimum pavement necessary for a 180 degree turn is approximately 75 feet. The wingtip swings the largest arc during a turn, followed by the tail and then the nose. This turn radius is predicated by applying slow continuous turning, symmetrical thrust, no differential braking, and a dry surface. The A320 may include three classes of seating, first class, business class, and economy class. A typical seating configuration may include 12 first class seats plus 138 economy seats for a total of 150 seats. This diagram indicates the location of the ground servicing panels and receptacles. Maximum weights are shown here for reference. Aircraft thrust is provided by two IAE 2500 series engines, which provide the A320 with a fully loaded range of approximately 3,000 nautical miles. The A320 has a maximum fuel capacity of 41,285 pounds, or 18,728 kilograms. Aircraft refueling is typically accomplished using the fuel coupling located under the right wing. A fuel cap installed on top of each wing allows the wing tanks to be gravity fueled. If needed, the center tank can then be fueled by referencing the ground fuel transfer procedure. Takeoffs and landings are limited to 9,200 feet pressure altitude. Maximum demonstrated crosswinds for takeoff and landing are as follows. The maximum service ceiling is 39,000 feet. Normal cruising speed is between 0.78 and 0.80 Mach, with a maximum speed of 350 knots, or 0.82 Mach. Air speeds are limited when penetrating turbulent air. Below flight level 200, air speed is limited to 250 knots. At or above flight level 200, air speed is limited to 275 knots until attaining 0.76 Mach, which will then be maintained. The flight deck is equipped with two pilot seats and two forward-facing jump seats. An intrusion and penetration-resistant flight deck door separates the flight deck from the cabin. Two side sticks replace conventional control columns, ensuring excellent visibility of all flight instruments. It also allows for two sliding tray tables located in front of each pilot seat. Space is provided outboard of each pilot seat for flight bag stowage. Let's take a look at the inside of a typical aircraft cabin.
There are four main cabin entrance doors, four overwing emergency exits, a total of five flight attendant jump seats, two galleys, one forward and one aft, and three lavatories, one forward and two aft. The overhead panel provides switches to control and monitor the aircraft systems. The central part of the overhead panel is dedicated to major aircraft systems, including air conditioning, electrical, fuel, hydraulics, and fire protection. We'll take a look at some of the typical panel features using the fuel panel as an example. On the left and right side of the panel is the system name in large letters. For each system, there is a diagram which provides you with a basic layout of the system and key relationships between major components. Smaller control panels for other systems are located along the outer edge on both sides of the overhead panel. These include controls for cockpit door video control, air data inertial reference system, or ADIRS, flight control computers, emergency evacuation command, emergency electrical power, GPWS, voice recorder, oxygen systems, communications, rain protection, cargo smoke, ventilation, and additional engine controls. Frequently used controls are located at the front of the overhead panel to make them easily accessible. These include controls for wing and engine anti-ice, probe and window heat, cabin pressurization, exterior lights, interior lights, signs, and the APU. Notice there are very few conventional toggle switches on the control panels. Most of the controls are a latching push-button design. For example, when you press a push-button that is flush with the panel's surface, it stays latched in the newly selected position until it's pushed again. On some of the smaller control panels, you will find certain push-buttons that do not latch. They're referred to as non-latching push-buttons. An example of this is the Record Ground Control push button. When this push button is in its normal lights out position, the cockpit voice recorder or CVR function is automatic and operates when the engines are started. During pre flight, the push button is selected on. This turns the CVR on to record the crew's activities prior to starting engines. Non latching push buttons return to their original position once the push button is released. Later, when engines are started, the automation will take over, and the blue on light will extinguish automatically. Some panels contain indicators that look very similar to push buttons. An example of this is the indicator labeled Passenger on the oxygen panel. This is an indicator light only and cannot be pushed. When the engines are started, the APU is shut down and all systems are functioning normally. All lights should be extinguished on the overhead panel. This supports the Airbus Lights Out philosophy that no lights are illuminated when a system is in a normal configuration and is functioning correctly. Now we'll take a look at the Airbus philosophy for indicator colors when a light is illuminated. Keep in mind that this is a generalized summary and there are exceptions to these examples. A red light indicates a failure or condition that requires immediate action. 
abnormal conditions may be indicated by an amber fault light. For example, a fuel pump has failed. An ECAM message appears on the engine and warning display, announcing the failure. Additionally, a blue action step is displayed, outlining the steps to deal with the situation. In this example, the only required action is to shut off the failed pump. The fault light on the pump push button helps to locate which button should be selected. Select the push button for the failed pump. Notice that the fault light extinguishes and the white off light illuminates. White on and off lights indicate that a system is operating in a configuration that is not considered normal. Some on lights are displayed in blue. For example, the APU master switch push button and the APU start push button. Blue lights are used to indicate the status for systems that are used for short periods of time. For example, having the APU on is not an abnormal configuration, but the system will typically be used for a short period of time during ground operations. Green lights provide confirmation of a normal system status. Examples of green lights include the APU and external power available lights, which indicate that their respective power sources are available for use. The pedestal includes controls that are typically found in conventional aircraft. These controls include radio management panels, or RMPs, lighting controls, weather radar controls, transponder TCAS controls, thrust levers, pitch trim wheel, engine controls, flap and speed brake handles, rudder trim, cockpit door controls, parking brake, gravity gear extension handle, and the PA handset. The pedestal also includes a printer, a switching panel associated with your instruments, the ECAM control panel, and two multifunction control and display units, or MCDUs, which provide an interface to the flight management system, ACARS, and maintenance systems. The forward instrument panel includes six display units, known as DUs, that are part of the Electronic Instrument System, or EIS. The EIS is further broken down into the Electronic Flight Information System, or EFIS, and Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor, or ECAM. EFIS information is displayed on the captain and first officer's primary flight displays and navigation displays. ECAM information is displayed on the two displays in the center of the instrument panel. The upper display is the engine and warning display, referred to as the EWD. This is also known as the upper ECAM. Below the EWD is the systems display, or SD, which is sometimes referred to as the lower ECAM. Additional items located on the forward instrument panel include Controls for landing gear and brakes. Controls for the PFDs and NDs. Standby instruments and the clock. Lighting controls. And the loudspeakers and loudspeaker controls. The glare shield panels are used to control and monitor the flight guidance system and to control the navigation display. This portion of the glare shield is referred to as the Flight Control Unit, or FCU, which is used to set and control the levels of automation. These two sections are referred to as the EFIS control panels and are used to control the electronic flight instruments. In addition, Master Warning, Master Caution, Auto Land, and Side Stick Priority Lights are located on the glare shield. Consoles, outboard of both pilot seats, contain the following items. 
side sticks, nose wheel steering hand wheels, and a hand microphone. Located aft of each console is an oxygen mask stowage box. A circuit breaker panel is located above the overhead panel. This panel features an alphanumeric grid to assist in locating a circuit breaker. Additional circuit breakers are also located on the bulkhead behind the first officer. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is correct.